be. Because I'm one of them, uh -huh. and Jan and is one. Because as I understand it, after the committee uh, met, then the committee approved the landscaping plan on March 20th, 2018, if I'm not mistaken. Is that correct? Um, the I board is a can't, whole. No, so I'm I, can, not, I can answer that. Yeah. <laughs> I just see my notes. So um, the committee met beginning in October uh, through <clears throat> the fourth meeting was March 7th, and then the a presentation, the committee recommended the plan to the village board. The village board reviewed it. The library at a board. Meeting. The library. I'm sorry, the, yeah. the library board at March 20th meeting. So it was okay. a library so board. So this, this plan then was approved by all the people in this room. Is that correct? Yeah. I mean, yes. uh, Charlotte, at this point, why don't you make your statement and we'll see. Okay, if we... I'll make a statement, a short one. But, you know, I've, this is the third time I've come here. And I, I love coming here, it's delightful. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I thought I would really like to be able to engage in some kind of a meaningful discussion. And I would like to be told when that might be, because there's yeah. not really not, I mean, I think you all know that I'm in favor of planting native plants, mm -hmm. native plants, not whatever this word was, uh, well, what I would call nativars, but uh, plants that are not truly native, but true native plants, of which there are thousands of them that have been growing here for centuries and thousands of years and are totally adapted to the climate and conditions here and are what the butterflies must have in order to lay eggs. And the birds must have the caterpillars in order to feed their offspring. And if we are going to plant low-grow sumac, which is not a native plant, it's a nativar, and, we're, and I have no idea what's going to be planted throughout this, this scheme. I mean, I can, and I will say this too, I looked at this on the web. You can't tell anything about it on, looking at it on the web. It's not at all helpful to understand what's going on with the library. So, I mean, it, uh, it, it takes time to look at these designs and to understand what plants there are. And so, I mean, I, I offer myself, I know the Little Garden Club is eager to uh, participate, but uh, I'd like to be able to do it in a way that we could actually look at the actual plans and talk about them. Uh, I also want to urge the library board not to rush into this. I mean, if this plan is not executed in the next five years, it wouldn't make any difference to the community. I mean, the community is perfectly happy with the library landscaping as it is right now. So it isn't as if it's an urgent need. Now, I understand there is an urgent need for hardscaping. That's a safety issue. But this landscaping is purely discretionary. And if you're going to put in $600,000 worth of landscaping, I think it has to be done very thoughtfully and carefully, and that there should be principles that are being adhered to. I mean, if you're going to build anything, you have to have some kind of a principle that you're trying to uh, uh, adhere to. So here all we have our sustainability, which is a word that has a thousand meanings. So I, I feel that this is something that presumably this landscape will be here for a long time. It's not meant to be here for just a couple of years and then chopped down again and redone. So I would urge that we take our time, as a Wilmot resident, I say we because I've lived here for 45 years, and that we take our time, consider the climate, what grows here, uh, what does well here, and what it will look the most beautiful, and, uh, and try to achieve it. And I think this has to be rethought, because I don't really think that that new design for the uh, for the uh, flowers, I think that looks kind of like a busy mess. I, I, I don't see how anyone's going to enjoy that. It, it, the, uh, so I have some real questions about it. I don't want to take any more time. I'd like to offer uh, myself to uh, come and chat with whoever wants to, with Jan and anyone else on this board who's on the committee. This Miss George. Mm -hmm. uh, so. I just urge that we do not rush into something, a big project, which costs a lot of money, and this should be here for a long time, without thoughtfully considering what I would recommend is true native plants are plenty of them. We don't need low-grow sumac, and we don't need any, I don't know what else is being planted there because it wasn't mentioned. But um, The landscape portion is 93000 of the total fee. 
in terms of uh, landscape improvements. I think this was available to oh, you. Oh, yeah. I, I don't know. I thought I, it was available. No, yeah. it's 93,000 of the total. Mm -hmm. 93,000. Okay, well, yeah, that's, that's a, to my it's mind, a lot. that's a substantial It is a substantial money, amount, yeah. but it's not the 600 you were stating. No, but that's another problem because the budget, I, as I, it's I shown on the web, shows it as landscape, hardscape, and it's a million dollars that it's budgeted for. That's, on the, that's a budget. Now, I understand you're not going to spend a million dollars. Well, look at the budget. It's there. I mean, <laughs> just bring it I, up I, on the web. I am going to have to say that the time is up on I this, but I do, thank I you. agree, I really <laughs> want to once again thank the efforts that you've made because I do think that we're going to end up with a better plan as a result of that sharper on some of these details although I, I do also want to make the point we don't have very much land we're not talking about changing things too terribly greatly it's more what goes in rather than where things are going to be except in a very narrow area now uh, is there anyone else who would like to speak. Yes. Thank you. Could you tell us who you are? Yes. My name is Piper Rothschild. I live at 1046 Elmwood. I am a member of the uh, Little Garden Club, uh, but I'm speaking right now, and I agree with um, everything that Edie said and uh, Charlotte has relayed with regard to native plantings. My concern really is, um, but I'm speaking here as an individual, um, is about the plan in general. I feel as if that this, that there has been a great deal of lack of transparency about the plan. Uh, it's been difficult to try to get information with regard to the budget, what's in the plan, what is the plan. And maybe that's because you don't know what it is yet. Um, but even going back to the most basic level of why is this plan needed? I don't get anything from any of the documents. Yes, there's been talk about immersive experiences, some uh, activities that go on out on the lawn, outdoor learning or whatever. But I don't really um, see that again in the plan. Uh, and I don't really see the need um, for such activities. I mean, I don't know if that's something that's current in library science that I don't know about. Um, but I don't see also that there's been a demonstrated need or request from the public for this type of um, activity. Uh, and I feel also that some of the um, hardscaping that is proposed is more than what might be required um, and that it's uh, more expensive. I don't understand really the need for these pebbles, uh, bluestone paving, what's wrong with concrete. It just seems to me that we have an extravagant plan here for hardscaping and I don't really see the uh, the basis for it. I mean, I understand safety is a concern, and I'm okay with that, but it seems like you don't have a big piece of land and you're trying to make something there that isn't there that I don't see the need for. So, Thank you. you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak? Mm -hmm. Sir? <laughs> I'm back in the back. <laughs> Tom Moore is my name. I Could you take a seat, please? Do I have to sit down first? Yes. I will sit down first. Tom Moore is my name. I'm also a president of the Little Garden Club, along with Edie, who's already spoken to you. Uh, all I wish to express is the thoughts of an educator, because that's what I was. Uh, I taught high school biology. I taught at uh, Niles North and Niles West. And the, the key in my mind is that I hope the village of Wilmette can get out front, so to speak, and really show the rest of the public, here's the things that can be done with na native plants. Most people think they're just weeds. Um, the fact is they uh, allow the soil, allow the rain to be pulled back into the soil. It doesn't run into the streets. And I know that's a huge problem here in Wilmette. Um, the area around the library could be an educational space. A few signs here and there could talk about 
the various plants and the, and the things that they do. This plant is a home for monarch butterflies. This, this plant is a home for this kind of butterfly. So on and so forth. So you could either educate children or educate adults. That's all. And I don't wish the opportunity to be lost. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. We have actually adopted that sort of approach with other items that are geothermal, which is small, but it's there to show that you can do geothermal in the same way with the our parking lot, which is not actually small, but um, again, it's the, it's the idea that you can do these things, um, and they work. Um, they work. Uh, I mean, our heat in the front half of the building is from geothermal. It works. Um, so I agree with the educational part, and that certainly was one of, is very much one of our goals. Uh, is there anyone else who wishes to speak? Thank you for coming. Stay put. Um, just, just one point before we cut off the public comment. Um, there is a sign-in for everybody who came um, who isn't on the Board of Trustees or isn't a library employee. And I'm, if anyone didn't have the opportunity to sign in on their way in, could you please sign in before you leave just so our minutes can be accurate? Thank you. Um, that concludes our public comment point. One thing I think is important to reinforce is that Every meeting of this committee has been publicly announced. There has been no secrecy. Anyone who wishes to attend any of those committee meetings is welcome. And, and that's true for all our committees. That's right? true for all of our committees, except those that are specifically exempted under the Open Meetings Act. So there has been no secrecy about this plan as it was developed. And that process started more than 18 months ago. So this is not sudden. There has been no attempt to conceal things, but it takes time for the details to evolve and for them to be ready to be shared because until the board makes decisions about some of these things, the committee makes recommendations to the board, the board makes decisions. Until that process occurs, there's no formal plan. So more than a year went into the committee's work before the board acted in March. And as you heard from our landscape architect, some of the details are flexible enough that modifications can occur. There are safety issues associated with some of the elements of this plan. And it becomes much more expensive to split the project. So those are among the kinds of things we need to take into account as we make decisions about how to proceed. There is time to make adjustments in the plant materials that are planted. Mm -hmm. But there is also a little matter of nature and how plants get established and what the timing of that is. And we need to consider those details as well. There's probably no design that we could adopt that is going to meet every one of the objectives of every single person in this room. So we're going to try to find a compromise that best serves the needs of the community. And the principal answer to the question about why we would want to have programming space is that some of the most popular and well-attended programs this library has given and offered to the community over the many years that I have been on this board are outdoor programs focusing on families and children. And we have determined some of the objectives that are in this plan to try to make that better and safer for the people who attend those programs. So that's part of the reason for the, the pebble seating and other, other features that increase the attractiveness and, and the comfort level for people who participate in those programs. They are very popular. This is the only library, the only public library that serves Wilmette directly. So we feel it's our responsibility as the board to provide as much support for the kinds of programs that are popular here as we can. And this is part of that objective. 
Now, it may not meet all of the ob other objectives that might be appropriate, but we don't have a large enough piece of land in Wilmette to create an immersive experience for anything because you're never going to be more than 50 feet from traffic. There's no place on this property that has 50 feet of isolation from traffic. So we're going to work with what we have to try to create the best circumstance for supporting library services and programs that we can. But I doubt very much that every single thing that you could request will fit into the amount of space that we have. Now, we'll do the best we can, and we're certainly open to listening to recommendations, but there's been nothing secret about this. Every meeting has been publicly posted and announced, and we have had some, some people who aren't on the board participate in some of those discussions. It is not an attempt to hide anything. Now, the numbers that you were talking about were, were rough estimates. We're going to have a discussion yeah. on the project. So,